Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. It's Tuesday, the 28th of Feb, last day of the month, and uh, it looks like it might be a spicy one as well. Morning, Stell. Morning, Kay. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? All good. You finished uh, sailing around the Greek islands? Yeah, just for a few more days. <laughs> <laughs> now, next one is in April, so we have some time. Hard life. Hard life. <laughs> you got uh, how are you, Kay? You feeling a bit better, mate? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going going better. Still not perfect nights, but uh, it's going going better. Looks looks really like weekend stuff to me. I'm uh, too much time on my hands to catch calls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you have to get on your get your old bike out again, get riding around. It's about time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, well, let's get uh, into things. A um, few bits and pieces going on. Not too much on the headline front, um, but still, we've got plenty of market moves to talk about. Going to start with some data out of Japan yesterday. Uh, a few numbers there. We got retail sales looking a bit better. Uh, on the month, but industrial production um, looking a bit soggy, uh, down 4.6%, worse than expected month for month, uh, to minus 26 expected. Um, although one month ahead, expectations looking a bit better, a bit more positive on the uh, for the future. Um, but again, we're seeing this divergence a bit between what's happening in the manufacturing production side and what's happening in the services side. Um, and that's been evident as well um, in Japan. Um, Bank of Japan's Wakatabi says 2% inflation target is yet to be reached, even while inflation is running around 4.3%. Um, so they haven't hit their target yet for 2% inflation. Work that one out. Um, a couple more of the deputy governor nominees were uh, speaking yesterday as well. Uh, Uchida said, need to firmly support the economy with easing. Uh, Japan is no longer in a situation that can be described as deflation after years of monetary stimulus. And that widening the yield target band itself would weaken the effects of easing. Um, so... Not surprisingly, given what we've heard so far from uh, Ueda, but surprisingly overall, is they all seem to be taking the same lines as the prior lot um, in keeping a very easy sentiment. Um, again, this, as Kay's mentioned plenty of times, really seems like they might be missing an opportunity here to, to finally get the market ready for tightening. Um, even if it doesn't necessarily happen that fast, um, the, the window of opportunity continues to close. Um, one of the deputy governors, uh, Himino, said that current BOJ easing is appropriate. Um, we, we've had this conversation already, Kay, but it's another repeat, isn't it, from from these lot? No, no yeah, I mean, I, rhetoric at all. Yeah, I, I don't understand why Ueda and his uh, incoming uh, deputies are not a little more, uh, I wouldn't even call it hawkish, but uh, less dovish, but they did. They just seem, seem to 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 be happy with what uh, Kuroda has been doing, and um, and and I'm I'm actually surprised because um, I had I was of the impression that Kishida wanted to break a little bit with the the tradition, but yeah, um, exactly. the fact that they keep on mentioning the the government finances as well, perhaps not overnight, but uh, is, is clearly a sign that they are not going to break any pots. Um, or, or at least that's that's the uh, that's the impression that we get now. Um, again, I'm not sure whether um, we are not going to see a, a last um, uh, surprise by Kuroda because he's he's had the habit to surprise markets over over the the years. Um, on the 10th of March, um, uh, that he would go out with the bang and do something um, just to. Uh, prepare the, the, the field for, for the other guys. But for the time being of what we hear um, and, and what they say, um, they, there's, there's no big uh, no big shock uh, coming. There's no um, big reformer. The big reformer, the, the way that could have been, is, is, not, um, is not showing. Um, maybe cultural, Eric says, maybe cultural don't want to step on Corona's toes before he leaves. Yeah, but that's not, that's not, um, yeah, it, it, it is Japanese. Uh, I, I, I agree, but um, 
there there should have been more hints at uh, doing something because um, you you can just give the markets what uh, what they want and give uh, because the Ueda has been grilled by some of the politicians saying like um, why are we in this uh, in this tight uh, straight jacket for for years even decades and um, and Ueda had the chance there to to do to say something and not not even shocking not even uh, um, stepping on Kuroda's toes but um, just saying like yeah we are in 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 a uh, we are going to use this this window of opportunity to to normalize monetary policy a little bit and then he could add it's it's going to be a very very slow process but we we haven't even got that so yeah. He's not even played both sides of the fence, has he really? Yeah, that's the thing. The one side. little thing he, he said was like they, they will be looking at economic data, but that's the same thing as, as any other central bank right now, which is uh, uh, they, they're all data dependent, right? So, um, um, yeah. There's, I, there's, I, not I, even a, there's not even a we, but if. You know, you could say, okay, we don't think inflation is going to stay high. It's at 4.3% or whatever. We don't think it, this is going to stay up for long. But if it does... We've got the tools to respond and will respond. You know, that's what the Fed did mm. all through the period. They're not even going into that part of it. No. And it's just, unless, you know. And unless we get a shock, if wages really go higher, um, and, and then we can uh, we can be in for a shock. Who knows? But uh, maybe Hueda is going to surprise us after all. But for the time being, and that for the next month, because before he takes uh, office, um, it's it's not giving giving the markets any food for uh, for getting um, for getting bullish yen or hawkish uh, hawkish Bank of Japan, right? So yeah, do, we, do you think they're scared of of saying something right now before they're in the hot seat because they don't want to upset markets that much? They're scared of upsetting markets too much by even hinting about tightening. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at the the. The yen levels and and let's face it in in Japan uh, central bank independence is is a, is just a is is just a term right it's it's not really uh, it's not really there because um, especially from uh, Abenomics onwards um, the government and and the Bank of Japan and the MOF have been just uh, um, riding one train altogether um, but. Um, yeah, I mean, this we, we we haven't got anything saying that. Uh, and and if you look at the yen level, they they have that that is the extra opportunity for them to change something, because if in, in, imagine that in, in in the global terms, okay, in global terms, they they start to change uh, monetary policy, and dollar yen goes back to 120, 125 or so. Um, there's still nothing. I mean, nothing dramatic. <clears throat> We've been trading dollar yen. In, inside a call it 100 115 range for for years and um, if if they we are at yen levels and and whether it is via the dollar yen or, or via all the yen process where it's the 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 opportunity that's an extra opportunity for them to to do something because there is no danger for the yen to go too strong right now. yeah yeah exactly yeah, they're still on the right side of it yeah. You know, it's, it's, what can it, where can it go from here? You know, if, if they do start tightening, it's a really slow process, as you say. You know, maybe you might get down to one hundred and twenty, but you're not going to be going all the way down to one hundred and seventy-five and that sort of level, are you? No, there is absolutely no danger for that right now, um, especially that if, if as everyone expects now, and and, and we are not the only one saying that now. Uh, well, I mean, some of them were speculating that they may go uh, a bit harder, but. Um, they, they are not going to do anything silly or, or because they don't want to put the government finances in, in danger either. So the risk for the, for the yen, dollar yen to go back to 100 is, is slim right now, right? But in, if in yeah. turn they, they do nothing, then I think there's a real risk that this market is going to take the Japanese yen on and, and 150 is not going to be your final station, you know, and then we are talking about different levels and then they are going to have to go to work to do something and they are going to be forced to, to, to change stuff and then it's going to be worse, in my opinion. So, the, the yeah, and as we have been saying, the window of opportunity is there now and, and they, better, they better use it, they better use it, but uh, we haven't heard as much so far. No, well, as you say, if the 
I don't know how long they're going to watch inflation staying up around there. They've already touted that next month's inflation numbers are going to pull back. Um, so perhaps they know something we don't. Mm. Um, but and, still, you know. And an extra issue is is that they are uh, their current account uh, for the time being is either hovering around zero or negative. So. Um, if they don't do much and 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 the global economy doesn't really pick up for for Japan to export more and more and more, they are going. They're just adding to 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 problems for the Japanese yen possibly in the, into the future. And yeah. there's a lot going against the yen right now. So I mean, changing the, the 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 monetary policy would be a first step to to in fact stabilize stabilize or or put the yen on, 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 a, on a better footing. Because, of course, I mean, they, they always think about, they, they, they've been in decades of weak yen is good for the exports and whatever, but for the time being, they're importing still um, a, a lot of energy and stuff because they are, they're, um, um, their um, nuclear plants are um, all in the plans to, to, to restart, but it takes months and months before the, the, the security details are, are all set and to start up again. So for the time being, they're still importing more than they more than they export. So um, I, I don't think the yen level has is, is helping them right now. So um, it would be everything now would point to them normalizing something. And unfortunately, it's not what we get from the first um, Ueda speeches or interviews or, uh, or interventions. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a situation we need to watch, and we have still got those uh, wage negotiations that we've heard a lot about um, all coming into the uh, end of quarter stuff. So, still got some time to wait for that, just to hear what companies are going to be doing. You know, bigger, also the big whales. What are they going to be doing with their investment uh, strategies going into the new financial year? So, lots to come, and uh, we shall see where we are come then. Um, looking at some of the other data coming into today. Let's have a look. Got some data out of Canadian uh, GDP. No, uh, what, sorry. Uh, Canadian GDP is coming later today. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, Aussie uh, retail sales was out and another January jump. And we've seen it around the globe. Um, this January jump in retail sales, November and December was, was poor. And uh, all these January numbers keep coming in on, on a decent beat. 1.9% versus 1.5 expected down 3.9% in December. Um, not that you'd know it in the currency anyway. Uh, the Bank of Japan core measure of inflation um, came in unchanged at 3.1%. Uh, so maybe a bit in part of what they've been saying, what the bank said about expecting inflation to pull back from that 4.3% reading that we got uh, the other week. Um, Brexit, we finally got a deal. Look at that. A Brexit deal is finally on the table. Months and months and months, this Northern Irish stuff going on, and we got a deal. And when the deal was announced by the BBC, what happened to the pound? Well, cable dropped five pips. Uh, that was the essence of the move when the deal was announced. Is it something um, that's final and done and signed, or is it something of that's Of course been not. Of course, Don't okay. So that's why. It's only been five years, you know. That's why the market doesn't care anymore. I put, I, but, funny enough, I was having a, I was having a conversation on, on Twitter with uh, Michael Brown and uh, Amanda Cooper from Reuters. Yeah. And um, I said, I'll, give it, uh, I'll make a market of 30 minutes before it gets picked apart, this deal. And I don't think I lasted 10. Uh, <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. They are tackling some really important issues, like they removed the ban from, on chilled sausages entering Northern Ireland from Britain. I mean, come on. This is very, very important stuff. Hey, sorry, don't I have to laugh. Sausages, don't make don't, not sausages. Sausages run the country. Oh, uh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have a fried breakfast without them. Um, but, but yes, so the deal is has been announced to much fanfare by Sunak and uh, von der Leyen. And on paper, it does look like it's going to be a winner because some of the heavy Brexiteers in Sunak's party, like Steve Baker, are behind it. Um, a lot of MP, other MPs are behind it too. Um, the uh, ERG, this little group within the Conservative Party that were heavy Brexiteers, are they haven't fully got behind it, but they're not making waves, big waves against it. Um, 
the Northern Irish Party, the DUP, are reserving their comments at the moment. There was a lot of headlines that they were behind it as well, but they're going to be taking their time to go over it with a fine tooth comb before giving their full verdict. But by and large, it is a bit of uh, a concessions on both sides to get to a deal. It does look more a case of it passing through and, and being done than not, uh, as in the previous cases. But as mentioned, with regarding the reaction in the pound, it's not been uh, a huge mover for the quid because it's been on the table for several months now. Um, and the last few weeks, the talk picked up that a deal was being done. So not a huge reaction um, in pound pairs initially on that news uh, yesterday. Uh, but on a different slant, um, on the inflationary front, uh, UK grocery price inflation hit a new record high at 17.1%, according to Kantar. Um, so despite inflation maybe pulling back generally, um, what you're paying at the shops is still heading north. Um, grocery sales were up 8.8% in the four weeks to February 19th. That's from the same Kantar mob there. Uh, EU's Wojcik said that the ECB is about to get to restrictive territory on rates. Uh, markets are right to price in 50 basis points for March. Uh, the ECB will continue making rate decisions on a meeting by meeting basis. The ECB's role is not to say where the terminal rate should be. Um, ECB's Lane was out saying a case for a 50 pip hike in March remains solid and the ECB has started to win the inflation fight. Uh, choice comments, considering that France in French inflation jumped two pips, as did Spain's inflation jump two pips. Um, so higher reads for both of those. Uh, I think that's the second on the trot for those two um, countries, France and Spain, both seeing inflation back rising. Um, so ECB's lane starting to win the inflation fight, he says. Not if you're in Spain or France at the moment. Um, now, those moves there did set a little bit of a, a chain in motion um, this morning. We saw yields across Europe, mainly Spain and uh, France. Where's my yield chart gone? Um, rallying quite strongly. Yields up a good chunk, nearly 10 basis points, well, over 10 basis points, really. Um that's got the euro well bid as well, um, particularly in uh, the crosses. Um, that also gave US tens a little helpful nudge up, up to 3.96%. That's really this higher for longer narrative really kicking in. Um, now that was happening in the US. Now it seems like it's going to happen in Europe as well based on those inflation readings. Money markets are now fully pricing a 4% peak ECB rate for the first time. Uh, and on the rate probabilities, well, we're only pricing 58.5% chance of a 50 pip hike at the next meeting. And that's because we're also pricing a 75 pip hike at 41.5%. So the market definitely looking more hawkish for the ECB. Um, what of those numbers, guys? That's two months on the trot now for France and Spain moving higher. Um, is uh, Are we going to go back to the highs or is this just a dead cat bounce? That's a good question. It depends on energy, really. And uh, we've talked about the Eurozone being a lot more dependent on energy prices uh, because of all the imports, uh, because they, you know the EU imports most of the energy uh, compared to, let's say, the US. Um, it is worrying that we're seeing a couple of prints uh, higher than the previous ones. Uh, I, I'm of the opinion that inflation is going to recede eventually. Uh, will we see a plateau here? Yeah, I think we could. But um, I still think inflation is going to be dropping on a year-on-year -year basis um, as we move forward. But we do need to see oil um, moving lower and the uh, the cost of production basically of of goods and services to be uh, to be reducing um so i don't know i don't know it's it's uh it's definitely giving the ecb um reasons to be hawkish 
uh, more reasons to be hawkish. And uh, but if you look at it, you know, there you have the chart, right? It looks like it's kind of plateauing. So yeah, maybe we get a couple of prints here and there, plus one, plus point one, plus point two. You know, the the big picture is that the, the rate, the big rate of increases is, is fallen dr dramatically. Now the rate of increases is, is kind of steady. And um, I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, I didn't express it yeah. properly, but, you know, uh, so for me, that's a big picture. Um, I do think we're going to start dropping eventually. Uh, you know, I, I was talking about the end of this quarter for, for a while um, back in 2022. I was talking about the end of Q1. 2023. Uh, okay, maybe it takes a little bit longer, but I do think that we're going to be uh, easing off uh, going into the, the remaining of the year. The question is, how much do we ease off? You know, if we stick, if we stick at uh, you know five percent and no go lower, then they have to keep going and going and going, right? That's a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tale of, of two countries really. You know, there's there's Spain that that came off quite heavily, and they they got to one of the highest up in the ten percent there. Um, and they came off quite significantly. Um, but we all knew and we all said it's not going to be a, a straight line. Um, and they've had a they've seen a big drop in inflation, the, the rate of inflation down to, you know, just under six percent. And now it's creeping back up again. But you compare it to France, it's still at the peak. Um, you know, there's no there's no cause for peak inflation in France at the moment. Uh, it's still right up there. So. Yeah, you want to take it on a country to country basis and, and the eurozone as a whole. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I never thought that inflation would be coming in a straight line back down to two percent, three percent, because it's just it just doesn't move as quick as that on the way back down. Now you're getting all the price pressures coming in domestically. Um, so yeah, we could we yeah. could see this turn around again and, and see inflation coming down. But as I've always said, it's where inflation settles. It's where it does plateau out or or stop you know spain's coming down is it stopping around here that's still two and a half three percent four percent above the ecb's main target um the similar could happen in germany we see price pressures easing but then they hold at a level that's that's not going down anymore um and that's what the ecb are, are going to take uh, into account what do you make of it okay i think the um uh, I don't know about inflation. I tend to agree with uh, with Stelios that on a year-on-year -year basis, it's going to come off just because of mathematics, right? Uh, but um, I, I'm doubtful that we are going to go anywhere close to uh, to where they want it in, in uh, over 2023, at least. Um, yeah, I think the 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 higher for longer is is still very much uh, very much alive um, across across the, the 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 globe in the in the uh, let's call it the major economies or so. Um, yeah, it's it's um, it's still going to be uh, sticky um, as we say. So yeah, money markets will have to um, will have to re continue to reprice um, and. Uh, I think it's also a little bit what we are seeing in uh, you know, on on the back of uh, on the back of the Northern Ireland deal. I think the market finally uh, is trading it right now. They wanted the confirmation, and then if you look at the um, the UK yields as well, they are uh, they are pretty perky uh, again this morning, and uh, we are we are back uh, to to three eighty five on the on the. Um, uh, on on the UK tens, and uh, we haven't seen that since uh, October, really. So um, yeah, I, I think the market is, uh, is is still in the repricing uh, repricing phase, um, and then yeah, the rest is is going to depend on, uh, on on data. Paradoxically, if if if, uh, if CPI comes down, but uh, Data don't 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 economic data don't fall out of bed in the whole process, which they seem to um, show us right now. Um, then you are going to uh, to have those yields uh, remain even uh, even stickier, right? Um, yeah. The the opposite would be true if uh, CPI come uh, starts to fall, like uh, uh, Stell is expecting as well. And end of Q1, we're still not there. We still have a month to go, so we can still see the next uh, batch of numbers or come April or so. Uh, start to point lower, but if 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 then we we're seeing a peak in economic data as well and and coming off, then you're going to have again the the the, re, the the pendulum is going to swing again to the other side. So that's why I'm always saying, and on, on on every time I've got the occasion to say so, we are 
ultra data dependent right now. And the, and the, and the money markets, we have seen big moves. Um, uh, if you look at, um, you were showing those those 10 year yield. If you look at those 10 year yields, starting 2023, uh, stay on where, where, where you are there, right? The UK yield, yeah. starting 2023, we we're trading around 3% in the in the UK tens. We're up at 385. That's 85 basis points in, in two months time. That's a lot. That's that's really a lot. And uh, so the market so that, still that, is accelerating. Just, just this month. We are still in this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, and, and we are still in this accelerated process of markets having to reprice stuff, which uh, which well, gives us opportunities, but also um, provides for those pretty violent ranges once once the um, the uh, the yields are on uh, on the move in uh, in in FX as well. So uh, I still think that uh, and and we keep on repeating here. But I mean, if if you want to have an, a, a a clear overview on on fundamentals and stuff, I mean, your first point of monitoring is yields and and what the differentials are doing um yeah. so uh if inflation remains sticky if economic data uh continue to to hold up i mean there's there's very little that stands in the way for more repricing and then i see and then i think we can see um because the the you have expectations on on the fed or, or central banks you're going to find that in the short end of the curve but if economic data hold up then the longer end of the curve has to correct more, and then and then you're going to see um, those those tens and uh, anything in the belly from the five, the seven, tens, even 20, 30 years, they will have to reprice uh, as well, and that's where I think your 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 currencies will be uh, will be on the move uh, too. Yeah, I mean, look look at the difference between UK tens and twos. You know, UK twos, you know, yields are under. Compare that to the US, it's uh, you know. It's between there, around. it's nearly a hundred basis points difference. Uh, it's, it's the other way around, and I, and and that's what I also said uh, yesterday. Um, sorry, guys, I'm still a little bit short short of breath. Um, you know that's, what I, that's what I also said yesterday. Um, it, it, there's a risk in in the in the in the yield curve as well, building. I think for for the dollar. Um, and and I'm not trading it right now because the economic data don't tell me this way, but uh, the inversion of the curve in the US is starting to be massive, really, really massive. We are, if you look at the twos and tens, we are just shy. Uh, well, I mean, it's 90, 90 basis points or so um, this morning, um, but we are shy of 100 basis points. And sooner or later, either the market needs to reprice that and take the the, the, the longer end of the curve a lot higher, uh, which um, um, still was saying around four, 430s or so on the, on the US tens. Um, or there's going to be something in the data that gives the market um, a reason for this big inversion. And then it's going to create, I think, an inflection point for the dollar um, at some stage. So that's something that I'm really starting to, to, to monitor closely. There's a few things that we need to monitor now, um, which is the, the, the nominal yields, the real yields, and, and the, the, the inversion of the curve. And as you rightly pointed out, <clears throat> The curve in in UK, for instance, is is uh, especially between twos and tens, is still positive, and in a way, that may help sterling, um, because yeah. that means that the, the 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 market is is not seeing too many problems in in the future for for the UK apparently, and perhaps this is now what we are seeing that that's being reflected in the sterling, and I was saying yesterday and. And I completely missed the opportunity that I've, I was like looking for to, to buy cable at some point, and uh, it's already 150 points higher, and uh, euro sterling is lower. But there is some some of those things that I'm keeping an eye on. If we talk about fundamentals, which we do talk on 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 this show about, um, is is um, or as long as everything goes well in the economy, the inversion is not a big problem. If if numbers start to turn down, then this inversion is is could possibly create a big problem for the dollar at some stage. Yeah, yeah, that's something we probably have to talk about at some stage. Um, but just just to you know try and explain what Kay is saying. So the the, the yield curve is. Oh, was I not clear between... enough? No, no, no. You were no, you were, mate. I'm just talking about the the what means by inversion and uh, the likes. You know, so 
just for people who don't know, you know, so when you're talking about the yield curve, it's dependent on whether it goes like that between the short end, like the one years, two years, and all the way down five, sevens, tens, 30, or whether it goes like that in the same thing. So that's what they mean by the curve. If for just for anyone who doesn't know, understand what uh, the curves mean and they imply different things. Inversion can imply usually is used as a, as a measure of uh, potential problems coming for, for the economy. Um, but that's what we're seeing. The U S is, is looking like that. And the UK is looking somewhat more like that. Um, but let's get into the, the specifics of it. We can uh, discuss at a, another point, but that's just to explain what, the curve means for those that may not know. Uh, let me get rid of them. How do I get rid of them? Oh, get rid of it in a minute. Um, right, just to finish up some of the data that we got as well. Uh, let's get rid of that and that. Uh, coming into uh, yesterday in the US, uh, we got uh, durable goods, which undid quite a chunk of the move. It was a, a big jump last month, uh, coming in at 5.1%. There were some big ticket items in there um that showed up aircraft and the like so there's been a bit of a washout on the, the headline number they're down 4.5 percent um however the core number um or the investment category uh, this one here came in a decent 0.8 percent um and in fact core goods came in positive at 0.7 percent this one could be more reflected of what we've saw in retail sales we saw positive retail sales in january um, and this core durable goods are things like white goods, TVs, fridges, freezers, that sort of thing, appliances, um, computer equipment, that sort of thing. So that's perhaps a bit reflective of what we saw in those retail sales numbers. But on the whole, a bit positive, even with that big negative headline, the underlying components still looking pretty good. Uh, pending home sales came in healthy 8.1% on the month, um, not as bad on the year falling 22.4% versus last year. Um, prior was minus 34.2%. So housing data has been a bit mixed. It's been a more positive than negative um, right now. The uh, MBA numbers have been, for February at least, have been going the other way. They were looking positive coming into the year. They've turned a bit south now, so the picture's a little bit mixed as to what's going to happen in the housing market. Um, obviously, rates expectations on things like 30 year mortgage rates have jumped again. I think they jumped from 6.39 to 6.62 last week. Um, so as the market gets more hawkish, the Fed mortgage rates are going to be looking higher as well. Um, Morgan Stanley have said uh, that they do not see a rate cut from the Fed this year. They now see a rate cut coming in March 2024. Um, and they see the Fed cutting rates at a slower pace of 25 pips each quarter. Uh, they see the Fed funds rate at 4.25% by the end of 2024. Bank forecasts with their fingers, wet fingers in the air once again. Right, let's get uh, have a look at the, the pricing really, um, see what's been going on. So cable's looking a bit uh, bullish at the moment, just breaking 121 as we're sitting here right now. Um, so looking very positive. Euro still keeping a bit as well. Um, and I think we're seeing Euro sterling breaking down a bit at the moment. Um, we're probably going to differ in opinion between me and Kay. I don't think this is anything to do with the Brexit stuff. Um, I think this is purely the, the greater volatility that we get in cable versus euro dollar that we see sometimes, for example, if euro dollar moves 30 pips, cable is likely to move 50, 60 pips, something like that. I think this is just a volatility move rather than a move on, on because the pound or the UK is suddenly the best place to park your money. Um, but the price action is the price action. At the moment, it's looking like it might be breaking down a bit. If we're under 87.60s, um, Keep an eye on this low here, round about that 60 area. Then we could begin to push down to the next level, 87, 87.20 ish down there, that prior low that we saw. And that has been a previous support and resistance area historically. So watching this break here, I'm still long. Um, I missed a, a long off there last time. I would be looking at it again to add to my core position um, and to play some in the short term for that one. 
Um, now, Kay will show you this uh, probably in the crosses. Um, they have all been ratcheting higher. Again, pretty much based on the yield situation that's been going on. Um, you know, you can pretty much pick uh, a cross and they're all looking the same at the moment today. So heavy euro buying coming in in uh, oh, get rid of that again. Oh, and I'll get rid of it. Uh, let's go on to that. There we go. So buying coming in in the crosses. Um, euro dollar is moving as well, um, as we can see. But it's not rocketing higher. So I still don't know what to make of this one. What, what do you what do you think of this one still? Euro dollar. It's can't quite um, get five. It's not really bouncing, you know. What's it what's it doing? I'm not convinced either way. I mean, really for me to uh to get bullish, we need to break above the um let me look. I was looking at the one hour chart actually. For me, that's really strange, but uh there, I think there is a minor resistance around 106, 25, 26. Uh, but uh, really, I think we're just chopping uh, because we have both central banks. I mean, the, the big picture is we have both central banks uh, having to be more hawkish than expected before. So, you know, they're kind of pulling from both sides. So I, 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 think, we're, I think we're ranging in, in the euro. I mean, of course, we could go 100 pips either way, but uh, nothing... Um, uh, you know, if you're looking at day trading, that's a different story. But for me, in terms of the uh, the, uh, the the kind of the, the more uh, lengthy view and the more medium term view, I've, at the moment, I think I think we're going to be ranging, and uh, it's going to continue until we get inflation um, moving more one way uh, than the you know in the U.S. Let's say than uh, than the eurozone. I think that personally, I think that's the more most possible, most probable scenario that the inflation in the U.S. starts dropping before. Uh, that move happens in the uh, eurozone, and that's why I think the the most likely move is we move up towards testing the 110 uh, highs. But obviously, this is not going to be today or tomorrow or next week. Uh, but so to answer your question, I think we're going to be ranging for now uh, until we see some economic data that make the difference. And as I said yeah. before, I think that it's going to be US CPI that starts it. I'm I'm going to scare K now. Mate, is that an inverted head and shoulders we got forming there? Huh? Looks like it. Don't don't make me don't make me draw it. <laughs> I refuse to draw it. Um, I'll, I'll let you pick that one out. You like the shampoos uh, more than I do. Um, mm. but yeah. So so the, the the euro crosses are really helping keep a bid under the euro, but it's not rocketing as much as the others. Um, and that cross is doing some damage or what not damage but uh, is keeping some of the majors um under the cost so euro dollar uh, euro aussie rising is keeping aussie dollar um contained here um bounce is still looking very weak off this 67 handle um but it is holding um so we've got a little bit of a range developing 6750 6700 could be that uh, the market moves more significantly depending on which way it breaks. If it breaks up, still got a lot of work to do to get back up towards that 68 handle. Um, so for now, the bearish pressure remains in place. And on balance, maybe the chances are that it breaks lower, um, more so than it breaks higher. Um, same situation for Kiwi. We had the break under 61.90, 62s, finding support into 61.30s. Bounce is, again, pretty weak. It's almost a mirror image of uh, Aussie dollar. Um, so this one I'm still short in and just waiting to see what happens. I'm looking for a break under these lows to get us maybe down to 61 and then start pulling my stops down um, from just above here, uh, this area, 62.25. Uh, I want to get my stops down. I've already taken some profit down here, but I want to start locking in the rest of it. Um Dollar one has looked like it's uh, had enough having a crack at uh, seven level for now. We've had a pull, bit of a pullback. Uh, again, a bit of a yield follow on this one. We had a move up uh, and yields, you know, in the US bounced and then they've come off a bit. And this has been pretty quick to come off the fix. Yesterday was still around the 6.95s. Um, so keeping things a bit steady. There's a bit of support here, 6.95. 50, 60, it's had a little look under down to 6.94s, but 
it got back above pretty quickly. So a bit of an area developing. They got some small steps going on here, 693s and a half. The big number is down 690, 691. Um, if we get down there and hold it, that'll keep this rally in play. Uh, then maybe we get another move up towards uh, the seven area. But if we're back under here, things are going to look uh, a lot less rosy. Uh, I've got my stops now just below there, uh, 689.50, um, just below this area here, trading stops up. So if we do break under there, might be looking a bit uh, uglier for this pair at the moment. Uh, Kay, do you want to take a, a flying visit around the pairs? Yeah, sorry, I had my microphone off. Um, yeah, um, just to come back on uh, on what we were saying on the... Um, uh, let me grab the cable. On what we were saying on uh, on uh, on Sterling. Um, well, you know, I think uh, because we, we just printed the high on, uh, on, on the cable here. If you look at the... Um, the really short term. Uh, look at what time we printed the high on the on the cable, bang on the hour. So I think there's a bit of uh, end of month fixing going on there as well, um, in uh, in in sterling, and and it's on it's clearly on the buy side of sterling, um, and it started early in the morning. But now uh, yesterday, yesterday I was saying like, uh, okay, I mean, if we get back down into this uh, into this zone, um, I'm I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a step at it, but. <laughs> From there, it just went 150 points higher, um, and so I, I I missed the whole thing. Um, it happens, it happens. But as I used to say, as I pleased to say, it's better to miss one than take it up the later hosen, right? Um, <laughs> That's so, a nice one. <laughs> uh, I'll let you explain that one. <laughs> sorry, I'll let you explain away that one. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it dates back to 19. When was it? 1980s. When I started working, we we were um, our when I started working in Belgium uh, for Citibank, and uh, our um, main broker uh, was uh, Bierbaum Dusseldorf. In those days, they were like number one dollar mark broker on the planet, and uh, the our um, our broker he. <laughs> He sometimes came up with that thing, and I just found it so so funny that I I, I just took it and, and and use it as uh, as my own right now, uh, and and that dates back uh, forty years or, or nearly forty years. So uh, and I'll uh, yeah, um, the later hosen is is those leather pants that the Germans um, wear when they they do the. Uh, uh, you see a lot of them at uh, at the Oktoberfest uh, in in Munich and uh, and things and. Uh, then they, they slap each other uh, like it's kind of a dance or, or tradition. They slap each other on the later hose, and sometimes it it, it hurts a bit. So uh, that's uh, that's why the the expression is also uh, uh, can can be used for the uh, for the markets as well. If you take it up the later hose and it hurts. Um, so yeah, I I think there's this 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 zone again that we have to look at in the in the cable and. Uh, um, Again, I'm, I'm, we are looking at, uh, we are in uh, in the end of month territory, right? So, um, what I'll be looking at is is where we end up after 4 p.m. and, and where we start the month next uh, next month. Um, but as as Ryan already shown those those uh, yields on, in in sterling. Um, if if yields keep up in 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 the sterling, this. It's it's going to to put a natural bit, I think, under under the sterling, unless we get bad economic data again come come March. But uh, it, it it could. I'm I'm much more neutral than I was in uh, in the past. In the past, I was really uh, um, uh, the past months or so. I was I was like a rally seller on sterling, and, uh, and sterling was going to go down. But I'm, I mean, I people in the room know that since the end of last week, and uh, I, I pretty much revised my opinion, and and I'm. More neutral, but I, I find sterling finding uh, finding better bits easier than 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 it was in uh, in in the past months, and it, it translates as well on the on on the euro sterling, right? Um, we, we're trying to get uh, to get back uh, below this uh, support here. I had a bit of support in this eighty-seven three quarters uh, down to eighty-seven sixties, as Ryan was already showing. 
Um, we, are, we are not yet at the uh, real danger zone. This, this is my danger zone here, just below 87. But um, depending on whether sterling strength continues after the, the, the end of month, I, I wouldn't rule it out to, to, to go and have a look back in, the, in, this, in, in those lows, right? I wouldn't rule, rule, rule it out at all. Um, and, and I could see sterling behaving relatively well um, for the time being. So that's a bit my uh, my view on the on the sterling right now. Yeah, we have seen this this uh, this breakout on all the on all the end crosses, and it's been uh, it's been pretty violent on the, on the sterling end as well. Just uh, with four big figures higher than than, than on Friday. Uh, I think we are, we are entering a bit of a, a bit of a resistance zone anywhere between 165 three quarters, not too far away, and around 166.60. So keep an eye on that uh, on that zone, uh, and I'd say especially starting of March, uh, whatever may happen now is is can be attributed to end of month. Um, the yen is behaving relatively weak. But uh, of course, in the end, we have to uh, we have to take into account what's happening here on the um, oops on the uh, on the dollar yen. We have this uh, confluence of uh, of uh, um, MAs on the daily. Um, we've already shown that the the, the cloud dropped away, right? Um, that is going to provide us with a bigger zone now, one thirty four. Call it 134, 80, 135, the 20 is going to be a big, uh, big support zone now. Uh, if we if we ever get uh, make it back down there, um, on the top side, I don't know what's to happen on on month end or so, but um, um, we we are coming into into big zones here, uh, anywhere between uh, um, this 137 and 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 even pull it up to 138, really, um, and and this. Um, um, we are we are trying to hold the um, the break here of this of this trend line, um, and yeah, I'm 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 not hundred percent sure what what to do with dollar yen here and now, but uh, I'm a bit long euro yen, and and this is it showed on the longer end as well, and the one thirty eight here is going to be another another big zone for the dollar yen. I, I it's it's there's a lot to there's a lot happening in the next. Um, 100 to 150 points, right? Uh, we have this 136.67 here as well. Um, there's there's a lot happening, so uh, we have to be very careful what we do with the yen going into March, uh, especially I think ahead of the last Kuroda's Bank of Japan meeting on the 10th. Um, <coughs> sorry, the um, oh Jesus, the um, so it, it's really a big zone that we have to monitor here. Um, uh, and then, as as we spoken about it, uh, looking at a little bit uh, further, we we have to know what uh, Ueda is planning to do if 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 they if they really don't use this window to 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 um, to do something about uh, monetary policy. Um, and, and I don't know where we are going to stop really. And I, and I'm starting to be in doubt that they're really going to do hard things i mean if if they do then then as i said we can we can get back to uh, this zone here 127 down to 125 it's possible if they change to um to 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 if they start to change monetary policy a bit more aggressively but if not i i, I don't even want to dare to uh to put a, a rate on where we could go uh, right now, and I'm and I'm really not excluding the the, the possibility that the market is at, at one moment is going to turn around and say like, well, you guys missed it, and 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 take uh, the yen much weaker. But uh, that's music for uh, for later, of course. In the shorter term, those other levels, um, euro yen. Right, we had it. Um, this this from the from the highs we are now in a in a series attempt of uh, breaking it it's around 144 and a half and we're trading above 145 so I, I I think I don't know whether it's end of month it is possibly end of month I'm going to be very very careful with um with what's uh, going on uh, into the 4 p.m this afternoon and um, I'm for sure going to take some off if we uh, some more off if we take uh if we reach 146s but um um 
again, this one it's it's a break, and even on the on the shorter term, we had this uh, wedge as well going up, um, and and that broke around 142, 20, 20, 20, 30. So we have a double a double layer of of short term. We have a double layer of of very short term support already around here. So. Um, I think if, if by the end of the day we're back below here, it's um I, I mean it's a free trade anyway for me right now. Um, but I'm I'm probably going to take it off because that means that dollar yen will have found the top as well, or euro dollar um, or euro dollar coming off uh, starting to come off as well. But um, yeah, this this these yen pairs are in break territory. So now we have to um, monitor what's going to happen um, after the end of the month because it, month end can always um, uh, have some surprises in it, and and then on the on the first or the second of the of the next month, we we reverse the whole thing. Silver, um, I finally that that was my plan. I finally started to to reload, but um, in extremely small amounts. Um, yesterday around twenty seventy, um, I'm still not convinced that it's uh, the bottom. Um, so I'm I'm keeping it very very small. To tell me that it's going to be a bottom in silver, okay, this this 21, 10, 15, probably, but the big one uh, for me, of course, the, the big one is 24 and a half, but um, to tell me that it's really going to shoot, we have to break back above 22, basically. Um, above 22 bucks, I'm going to pay up, because I think then that means that, that the whole thing is done. In the meantime, I'm going to be very, very shyly uh, start to add to my long term again down to uh, 1870s for sure um, and and I will not even if it comes down here I will not be in a full position I will still monitor the bounce and still keep some uh, um, out, of, out of risk management considerations for one and and for two um, if it comes down here um, that means that the dollar will still be very very strong and we have to be still very careful but I am Slowly, slowly, slowly re-entering. A goal, I have no clue, to be honest. Uh, we are on, on, on prior levels here in the low 18s. I think uh, unless the dollar flips around completely, there's still a possibility that we are going to see uh, under 18 uh, down to uh, 1780s. But I have I have no no clue on gold. It needs to retake 1830s, in my opinion, to 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 take away the bearish uh, the bearish pressure for now. So yeah, that's a pretty decent zone here. 3032 um, on gold. If that starts to break up again, I think um, we may be talking about something different. Um, anything else? Oh uh, yeah, let's have a quick look. Um, people were um, asking about the Aussie. Um, Aussie to me, a bit of a zone here uh, around 6720, and then the next one comes in um, 6685. 6670, 80, is the next relatively important zone on the on the Aussie dollar. Um, and as Ryan was already saying, we need to retake 68 for a starter. And then uh, I think here, that's uh, that could be one uh, which is in play. And if you 71 and 68 now it's three big figures, um, this could take us all the way down to the 61.8 if this uh, head and shoulder plays out. So. Um, that could be a big, big, big target here. So keep that one in uh, in mind if if Aussie continues to um, to show weakness. Um, that's still two hundred points or one hundred and fifty points away. So, uh, um, but hey, keep it keep it in mind. We never know. Could be a possible uh, target. Um, Kiwi. Ryan already spoke about it. Aussie Kiwi is stabilizing in the in the low 109s. Um, still 108.75.85, I think. And then on the top side, uh, 109.60. If we retake 109.60, 109.80, um, then this this may be over. But for the time being, I don't see too much reason for Aussie Kiwi to go to trade materially higher because, as we already said, the uh, the differentials between the RBNZ and uh, and the RBA are likely big enough to uh, keep uh, some sort of a lid on this uh, on this Aussie Kiwi. Um, Euro Kiwi, I'm try I tried, uh, but it's very, very small. I tried the break um, last night, um, see where uh, where this leads us um, coming the 4 p.m. It's, it's, it's really an end of month rate uh, based on uh, 
the the monthly moves in in equities and 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 stuff. And um, I've already took some off this morning around seventy. Um, so if it goes back down below one seventy one and a half, I'll I'll be out of there. And um, it's relatively it's going to be a really really small risk um, trade this one. Um, and uh, Euro Euro Aussie. Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, no. Uh, I need to go back onto the four hours. It's broken the triangle pretty violently. We are all already trading uh, 250 points higher, but on the longer term, we are uh, entering or nearing uh, some uh, some kind of resistance. You've got the with the 158.10 that we tagged this morning, and then here we have a bit of a trend line coming in. This is a prior high, prior low, and that is around 159. Around 159. 159, 159 and a quarter. Uh, that's going to be for the more medium term, the zone where um, where uh, Euro Euro Aussie has to cap, or it may mean really bad news for uh, for the Aussie, or really good news for the Euro in uh, in turn. So this is one that I'm keeping uh, I'm keeping an eye on, um, and that's basically it. Ryan already showed dollar China. Um, I don't know whether it's end of month going on there, uh, but I. Could imagine that we are seeing support coming in 693, 694 um, on the on the dollar China once uh, month end is done. Um, yeah, and and the battle for seven may still only begin. I, I think people towards the end of the month have taken the advantage of uh, being close to seven to take uh, to take profits and for the time being range. Uh, I'd say. Um, and and here's another one. Um, People don't know that I like this one. I'm, I'm flat for the moment. And I was really hoping for, for a return into this uh, one, at least 119.67.75. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even getting as much. Um, I, I really would love it to, to, to correct a little bit before um, we, we uh, start to go lower again. Uh, if we break prior lows, it's, it's really meaning bad news coming into, uh, or good news for the mix. Um, going into uh, into March, um, same thing for the dollar mix. It's just hanging around its lows, and it can't it can't regain the 1850s. So um, price action is not supportive for this pair at all for the time being. And uh, I'll leave it there. Back to you, Ryan. Thank you very much. Um, still, you want to have a look at uh, anything tomorrow? Yeah, uh, I'll do. I'll do uh, that tomorrow. Yeah, we've yeah. we've gone, we've, uh, cool gone uh, up uh, almost uh, past the hour now. So yeah, tomorrow I'm going to have a look at stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Um, all we've got on the calendar for the rest of the day is uh, some house price data from the US. Uh, but US consumer confidence is probably the number you want to keep an eye on today, um, and those all important inflation expectations to uh, play into the Fed trade. Um, so we shall leave that there for now. Uh, thank you, as always, to my two colleagues, Kate and Stell. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And uh, thank, thank you to you all the thank you to all the viewers as usual for coming. Yep. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Hope you uh, continue to recover. Um, yeah. We like you fighting fit. Um, yeah. Thank you to all the viewers for coming to the Flow Show. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If not, let us know, and uh, we shall see you all tomorrow. Thanks for coming. Bye bye.